Hello, hello everyone. It's Colin Finlay here, the owner and director of The Seller Store down in New Zealand. And welcome to today's episode of The Seller TV. So today what we wanted to do was actually just have a quick little introduction about a particular area, a wine growing area, which is very, very fond to me. Uh, it's not necessary, I'm not from there or anything else like that, so I don't have bias uh, in that respect, but I do actually import quite a, fan, uh, quite a few fantastic wines from across the region. And it's a region that I think is so incredibly underrated and nobody really knows about it. So I'm wanting to just shed a little bit of a light on that particular region, because uh, as I said, I do think it is very, very important. That particular region, some of you might be aware or familiar with a few of the bottles that we've got up there. We've got quite a few. I mean, we've got about 25, 30 different wines from across this whole entire region. Uh, but here are a few sort of just of our standouts. Um, and anyway, so the region that we're talking about today is New York State. Uh, New York State is an incredibly vibrant and very, very new world uh, sort of region. So of course, many of you are of course familiar with New York City, uh, and that's great. New York City is a fantastic place, one of my favourite places in the whole entire world. Um, and yeah, anyway, it's, it's a fantastic place. Uh, and so we've got two main regions uh, as far as New York City is concerned, um, or New York State is concerned. Sorry. Um, and I think overall there are about 300-ish or 310 perhaps wineries. Uh, that are across the whole entire state at the moment, which is very exciting. Uh, but yet nobody really seems to know that they're there, unless, of course, you are part of the, the wine-loving or actual wine trade uh, communities. So the two regions that are very, very important, we've got uh, Long Island across the Hamptons. Uh, this is split off into the North Fork and the South Fork. Uh, funny enough, we actually have two of the four wineries, I think, off the top of my head, that are from the South Fork, and that's Channing Daughter, so it's behind these guys, uh, and Wolfer Estate. And, and this is another Wolfer Estate winer here as well, uh, just of their sort of premium range. Uh, but, and so we've got about 80 wineries, I think, along Long Island, Long Island at the moment, uh, but then the majority of the wineries are actually up in the Finger Lakes. And the Finger Lakes literally are, they look like this. Um, and then you've got the big long lake, which is Seneca Lake. We've got uh, Keuka Lake and Cayuga Lake, uh, which are this one and that one, respectively. Uh, effectively, if you, <laughs> there are 11 in total, but there are three, three little ones, uh, three main ones, sorry, and a whole bunch of little ones, um, subsidiary ones, which not many people actually plant on. The main one, of course, is uh, Seneca Lake. And that's where you'll find these guys and a few others, of course. Uh, and so Herman J. Weimer, are incredibly important uh, and uh, one of the oldest wineries there. We've also got Dr. Frank. We don't have any of the wines here uh, for this particular video, but Dr. Frank is the Dr. Constantine Frank is the one who actually started uh, planting well, not just Riesling, but a whole bunch of uh, different grape varietals up in the north of uh, upstate New York. And so to give you an idea, uh, it's based around, well, Ithaca uh, is the main town in the south of uh, the Finger Lakes region there. And that is about five, six hour drive-ish, uh, depending on how fast you're driving, I suppose. Um, not that we condone speeding. speeding. Uh, anyway, from, from Manhattan. So it's, yeah, as I said, so it's about a half a day drive, give or take. Uh, up until uh, up to New uh, upstate New York, where the Finger Lakes are, and Ithaca is going to be the main town that you're going to find down in the south of the uh, actual region. It's about a 20-minute drive from sort of mid Seneca Lake. Uh, so yeah, anyway, that's going to be the main outpost there. And as I was saying, so Dr. Constantine Frank, he was the one that basically showed people that you can actually make wine up here. And to give you an idea, also, of course, it's it's I mean, what's what does five hours mean from Manhattan? Um, well, basically, it's also about an hour and a half-ish south of Niagara Falls. So it really is upstate New York, uh, but it does also get very, very cold there. Now, most people that are probably aware, New York does get very cold, covered with snow and frost and all the rest in those wintry months. Uh, but that's also very, very extreme up in um, up in upstate New York in particular. Also across uh, Long Island as well, but less. Uh, less so. Well, yeah, arguably. Anyway, uh, and so not many people were actually planting uh, wine grapes up here because they didn't think they would work. And so they just didn't even think about doing it, really. 
uh, not until Constantine Frank came along. And that's quite important because he came along uh, with a whole bunch of knowledge and expertise from Europe. And he was, being, he was uh, planting grapes and sort of doing a whole bunch of grape uh, scientist research and all the rest up in all sorts of places across Germany and a little bit in Austria, uh, some in the Ukraine and a few of those very, very continental and very, very cold climates as well. So he knew a lot about planting wine grapes in particular in these cooler climates. And so he brought that knowledge over with him in the 1950s uh, and into upstate New York. He walked with, uh, walked worked with uh, Cornell University up there and discovered and created a grape science program with them. And that was fantastic because then that basically led to a whole bunch of other import, uh, producers uh, coming around and saying, hey, if he can do it, why can't we? And actually Constantine Frank for the first, say, 10, 15 years or so, a lot of his winery wasn't really financially viable because he wasn't really selling his wines. He was largely just using it to make wine and showcase and prove to the world, not just in New York and, and not just in the surrounding states, but he traveled all across uh, America. And in fact, he had people coming from all over the world, be it sort of, as I say, Germany, as far flung as that. And I think he even had a few people from sort of India and a whole bunch of different sort of places all around the world. They're all very, very interested and very, very surprised that he could actually uh, make wine up in upstate New York. And this is also very, very important for America because it was with him and his determinants and his sort of proof, basically, uh, that the rest of America can now make wine. Um, and so, therefore, now we have wine being made in every single one of the uh, 50 states of America, not just in California, not just in Oregon or, or, and even Washington. Now, as I say, there are wines from actual wine grapes uh, that are based and planted and created all across the 50 states. And largely that mentality uh, comes from Constantine Frank. So he's a bit of a hero, a bit of a, na a national icon, uh, though very, very understated. Not, not many people know he actually existed. But nonetheless, the fruits of his sort of fortune, uh, his um, mental for fortune and fortu fortuitous um, pride that has led to many of these fantastic wines. Nonetheless, okay, so basically to give you a bit of a rundown, uh, Finger Lakes um, is famous for its Riesling. So Finger Lakes Riesling, very, very much the standing point of their whole entire sort of production up there. And as I say, there are about 250 wineries or so all around there. And what's quite interesting as well, that even, Ries even though Riesling is the most important grape varietal up there, as far as wine grapes are concerned, many of the producers are still actually using um, well, not wine grapes. They're not using Vitis vinifera grapes. They're actually using a whole bunch of all different sort of table grapes and hybrids and things like this as well. And so that's quite interesting to note. So there are actually very few producers, not just in upstate New York, but also in Long Island and a few of the other sort of smaller regions in New York State, which are using table grapes and hybrid grapes uh, to make wine out of. So they're not necessarily seen as wine, or at least not quality wine, uh, like these wines are. And when I say quality wine, quality wine doesn't mean above $20 or a bottle or anything else like this. It's purely um, using wine grapes for wine. So grapes that are specifically, well, yes, yeah, specifically harvested to make wine. Anyway, so that's that a sign. Uh, Riesling is fantastic and it is comes in many, many different sort of shapes and sizes, if you will, or different styles at least, uh, across uh, the finger links. And so you have people like uh, Red Newt Cellars, who are very, very sort of citrusy, um, but also very, very tropical. Uh, then you have Herman J. Wiemer, whose style of Rieslings are a little bit more Austrian, a little bit more German, very, very little bit more floral, uh, a little bit more stone fruity. And then you have people like Boundary Breaks. This is one of their sweeter wines, uh, the 198. Um, again, this is sort of a hybrid between sort of German and sort of New World style. So it's very, very sort of fleshy and ripe. And then you have everything in between. So you've got a whole bunch and a whole bunch of different styles uh, that are being produced just in the ways of Rieslings uh, up in uh, New York State, in, in the Finger Lakes region. And what's great as well is that you have very dry Rieslings, uh, like this one in particular, and then you have very, very sweet Rieslings and everything in between. So it really is the Riesling Mecca. So New York State and upstate New York in particular around the Finger Lakes region is the most important, or one of the most important places in the whole entire world now for planting and producing great world-class Rieslings. 
So if you think about the main places around the world where Riesling does really sort of shine, you would think Germany, of course, all across Germany. Uh, it is the Germanic grape, after all. Uh, you also have Austria. Uh, and then you think of Alsace in northern France. And then you think in the New World, you would think of Eden Valley, perhaps in Australia. You'd probably think of places like Marlborough in New Zealand. A little bit of a sort of an underdog there, but they're definitely coming through. Uh, and then you'd think of Washington State, perhaps. But I would say that top five, easily peasily, Finger Lakes. Finger Lakes in upstate New York. And I think they've proved that because they've got a whole vast array of not just styles as far as flavors are concerned. You've got everything from the very, very sort of mineral uh, and um, slaty sort of side of things up into the very, very sort of fleshy and abundantly tropical and very, very ripe sort of styles. And then the very sort of plush styles. And then you've also got quite aromatically floral styles as well. And so sort of every, everything in between. Uh, where most regions, especially in the old world, you can sort of say, pick it up, ah oh, yes, Germanic Riesling, and you can say, or Mosul Riesling, for instance, because it's got those sort of lovely, light, delicate, sort of stone fruit flavors, a little bit of apple there, and then it's got quite a floral sort of aspect as well. And so you say, in a blind tasting, ah, easily peasily, Mosul Riesling, no doubt about it. New York State, if you had to sort of do a um, blind tasting of a whole bunch of Rieslings, all that happen to come from New York State, you'd be, you'd be surprised at just how different all these different producers can be, even though they, are, they do overall come from quite a small region um, up, in the, up and around the Finger Lakes regions. Anyway, so Riesling, of course, is the most important grape varietal up there outside of Riesling, it is becoming a little bit more of a hub for aromatic white wines as well. So we are seeing quite a bit of Grüner Veltliner doing very, very well up there. We're seeing some Gewürz, uh, Gewürztraminer doing very, very well. Uh, Chardonnay, of course, does very well. And um, with, with Chardonnay, uh, there is actually quite a few people making some very serious and very exciting uh, bubbles. Uh, so sparkling um, sparkling wines made from the method, uh, traditional method, or the champagne method, method traditionnel um, style of, of uh, sparkling wine, and that's very, very important. As far as the reds are concerned, reds are very much, well, they're getting there. They are getting there, but they're very much a back um, in the back of their minds, basically. Most people are sort of focusing on, on white wines here, especially Riesling, as I say, sort of Chardonnay and things like this. Uh, but as far as the reds are concerned, uh, Pinot Noir and Cabernet Franc are definitely the two main red grape varietals that are doing there. I'd say, in fact, that, um, put it hand on my heart, um, Red Newt, their, their Cabernet Franc, and also uh, the Cabernet Franc from Herman J. Weimer is absolutely fantastic. Forge Cellars, we don't have it here on the table, we didn't want to clutter up the, the shot there for you all. We also wanted to make sure you could see me and hear me properly. Uh, but Forge Cellars and Heart and Hands Wineries, those are also two absolute leaders in Pinot Noir production, so keep an eye out for them. Anyway, let's move along to Long Island. Long Island here is quite, well, quite, well not quite a lot warmer, but definitely warmer than uh, upstate New York here. And it is also quite important to note that, of course, uh, where upstate New York is landlocked, um, these guys are surrounded by water, because if you know what uh, sort of New York looks like, New York State looks like, you've got Manhattan here, well let's say Manhattan is my elbow, and then you've got the um, Long Island, which sort of juts out, you've got Brooklyn al along here, and then you're jutting out and you've got the um, Long Island. Now it splits off, you've got the, um, well, let's go this way, you've got the North Fork along here, that's the majority of it, and then you've got a little bit here in the South Fork. Now, it's quite funny, really, because the majority of the wineries are along the North Fork, but we do actually have these guys here, Channing Daughters, and we also import Wolfer Estate and also their Grapes of Wrath uh, label as well. And they are all from the South Fork. And so this is where the Hamptons are, basically. Uh, and anyway, so as far as grapes are concerned, as I said, it is a little bit more warmer. And in many, many respects, Long Island is sort of akin to um, regions in California. So I'm going to say, uh, well, let's just put it out there. I'm going to say that Long Island is very, very much akin to sort of the Santa Barbara County uh, and also sort of the Russian River, sort of those cooler-ish um, sub-regions in California there. That is very much how I describe Long Island because it is quite warm. It definitely does get quite rich, ripe, fleshy sort of fruit in the wines themselves. 
uh, but there is that sort of cooling aspect there as well which you would get in as i say santa barbara uh, county in southern california or in sonoma uh, sonoma county slash russian river so you are getting those sort of cooling influences there from the pacific ocean but of course this is on the other side of america so you're getting those cooling influences all around uh, long island of course because as i said surrounded by water but of course that's the atlantic ocean uh, one of the main uh, sort of well, the two main styles, basically, you've got Long Island Chardonnay and Long Island Merlot. Those are the ones that people really sort of, well, put together when they are thinking of uh, Long Island wines, if they're thinking of Long Island wines. Um, but actually, I would have to say that their strong points now are probably Cabernet Franc. Uh, Cabernet Franc in the very, very ripe and rich sort of style, so very much that Bordeaux sort of style. There are quite a few Cabernet Sauvignons doing there. Well, of course, Merlot does do very, very well there. And But I'd have to say probably some of their best wines are Cabernet Franc. But that's just me personally. But again, they are very, very sort of fleshy, very ripe, uh, sort of somewhere between a classic Bordeaux uh, and a sort of a, a, a Californian um, uh, Bordeaux, Bordeaux blend. And then you've got uh, people like Channing Daughters, which are really sort of playing uh, all their interesting cards there and bringing in and trying all these different exciting varietals in, well, in the South Fork, that's where these guys are based. And they've got some Alpine um, or Italian, Northern Italian sort of grape varietals that they've planted there. So they've got things like Tokai Friulano, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, they've got some Muscat there and this particular wine, which is their Blau Frankic, as you can read on the label there. But they've also got a little bit of Dornfelder in there as well. Uh, and so they've got a whole bunch of different grape varieties that they're planting, which is very, very exciting. So it's quite cool to see that even though they are, well, I come from New Zealand, so we're quite a young uh, and vibrant sort of new, uh, new world producing wine country, but these guys are even younger still. Um, so as I was saying, that it wasn't until the 1950s or the late 1950s, really the 1960s, when wine producing um, became a big thing up in upstate New York, but it wasn't really until the late 70s, 80s, uh, until these guys started producing wine. And to, so already you can see it's a very, very young wine producing um, country, which is very exciting. Um, but it's also just filled with a whole bunch of experimentation. Uh, these guys have been making sort of vermouths uh, and a whole bunch of orange wines and things like this as well. Um, a bunch of different producers along Long Island. They're famous now and also in upstate New York. They're famous for their sort of their pet gnats and a whole bunch of these very, very experimental styles, which is very exciting. So really, I'm going to have to say that New York is one of the most exciting regions at the moment, 2017, and at least it will be for the next few years, like without a doubt, uh, one of the most exciting uh, wine regions in the whole entire world because of the wo absolute world class of the wines. These wines, especially the Herman J. Weimar wines, they've really put sort of top end world-class, high-quality Riesling uh, on the map, so Finger Lakes Riesling. And then people like Boundary Breaks, you really have to keep an eye out for Boundary Breaks, I think, because they are an absolute, absolute stellar winery. They're very, very new, one of the newest, believe it or not. I mean, they're all new, relatively speaking. Um, but uh, Boundary Breaks, they are one of the absolute newcomers in Finger Lakes there, and an absolute standout. But I mean, Wolfer Estate, absolutely fantastic. And what I love about their wines is they're so well balanced. They're very, very ripe, abundantly ripe, no doubt about it, but they are just so well balanced. So if you're a wine lover and you love big, juicy, fruity, rich, ripe and complex sort of wines, be it reds, be it sparkling, be it sweet, be it dry, white wine, red wine, whatever, they've got it all covered up in, uh, up in not just in Long Island, but up in upstate New York as well. And so if you're a wine lover, you really do deserve it to go out and try one, two, three, four, five, every single one from New York. Uh, because as I say, it is one of my favorite wine regions in the whole entire world. And it is a very, very exciting region. And I'd like to also point out, I'm not getting paid to, to <laughs> boast about New York wines. I really am just 100% so enamored with these particular wines. They are just so fantastic. And I really think it is a region which is understated and not many people know about it, but so many people should because there are not just fantastic wines there, but also some fantastic wine makers and people in the whole entire region there.
They're brilliant. I love them. I love them all. Uh, kisses, much love uh, to each and every one of them. So anyway, please find out more. We've got a whole bunch of links to not just these products that were featured in the um, video or to have a quick rundown. We've got the Wolfer Estate. We've got the Pearl Chardonnay. We've got the Wolfer Estate, their Cabernet Franc, their Estate Cabernet Franc. We've got the Channing Daughters, their Blau Frankage. Uh, Herman J. Weimer, their Dry Riesling. Boundary Breaks, their 198, their medium sweet-ish uh, Riesling, and then Red Newt Cellars, their dry Riesling as well. And so we've got all the information down below. It's got features all these wines. We've also got a whole bunch of information about New York State on our website so people can learn about them and educate them uh, as well. Learn a little bit more because this was just a little summary really. Um, and then we're going to have a whole bunch of videos as well also in this series on our YouTube channel and also on the website. Uh, tasting a whole bunch of different uh, New York wines, a bunch of Rieslings, some Gewürztraminers, some aromatics, some sparkling, a bunch of sort of Long Island reds as well. And so please do like the, like away the vi videos, watch the other videos, comment below, comment on the other videos as well. That's much appreciated. Let us know if you've tried any New York wines, if you've had similar sort of experiences. And if there are any other sort of New York wines that you particularly love and you think we should be knowing or getting to know or finding out or importing into New Zealand, please do let us know. Um, it is a very exciting region. So please do like away, comment away, subscribe away, please and thank you. Uh, and share, of course, with uh, a whole bunch of your different wine-loving friends and family. That is uh, that's much appreciated. All right. Anyway, over and out. Go watch another video, eh?